In this video, we're going to take a look at contacts. If you're not familiar, anyone that you do business with or anyone that has an association with your company can be a contact in Odoo. That means your employees, your customers, your vendors, or your contractors will all be contacts in the system. And they have important implications throughout the system. If we click into our contacts module and we take a quick search for uh, Deco Addict here, I want to point out some key information that's going to be utilized throughout the database. Now, there's no specific indication whether this contact is a customer or a vendor, but how they're used throughout the system will dictate whether they are a customer or a vendor. A vendor can, or a contact can be both a vendor and a customer, an employee. It doesn't necessarily matter, but where you use them will dictate whether or not you see them inside of your customer list in sales or inside of your vendor list in purchasing. When you click on a customer or contact profile rather, you have their default address, you have all of their default information, and importantly you have your tags. And the reason why I say these tags are important because later on when we use analytic accounts, we'll see how we can utilize these tags to, different, to do different searching and filtering and sorting of our financial statements with these tags. Now underneath the company as a whole, we have our contact addresses. So you might have several different contacts that are associated with a specific company. If I click on add here, I wanna point out a few different address types. We have a contact, which is just a contact that you might uh, call upon. We have an invoice address. This is important because this will be the default invoicing address that populates on a sale order or invoice when you want to invoice this customer. So Deco Addict, you might add them as the person on the sale order, but the invoice address will default to the invoice address underneath the company if they have one. Otherwise, it will just default to Deco Addict. The same thing is true for delivery address. This will be the default delivery address for this customer. And then we have a follow-up address, and this will actually be used in follow-up rules inside of accounting. If a customer is late on their payment, then we will use the follow-up address to communicate that late payment. Otherwise, it will default to the company as a whole. Now, beyond some of the default information that we might need to collect, there are some important information stored under our sales and purchasing as well as accounting tabs. First, let's look at sales and purchasing. Whatever you set under sales and purchasing will be the default settings when creating a new sale order or purchase order for this particular customer, or vendor, or employee. Under sales, we can set the default salesperson, the default sales team, the default payment terms that this contact gets. We can set a default price list that this customer gets. Down below, we have Avalara information. So later on, we'll look at taxes and we'll look at automating taxes with Avalara. And here we're gonna see our contact um, code. We can have an Avalara exemption if they are not paying sales tax. We can set different delivery methods. And if we scroll down, there's some more information down below, uh, specifically under fiscal position, we can set the default fiscal position for this customer. Now this fiscal position ties into our tax collection so we'll probably use either or, but if we're not using Avalara for automated taxes, we can set specific fiscal positions to determine how this customer uh, pays taxes. So whether uh, they're tax exempt or in their, they're in a certain jurisdiction where we collect a different sales tax. And we're gonna go through all of that information when we go through taxes, but I just wanna point out that this is all on the contact record, which will default on the sale order or purchase order. Under purchase here, we have the default buyer. So that's a user in your system. We have the default purchasing payment terms. If it's a 1099 employee that we're going to render services from, then we can set this 1099 box here. And this is going to be utilized later on so that we can export our 1099 information to upload that into another system in order to uh, facilitate our 1099 payments or our 1099 uh, tax information rather. Under payment method, we can set their default payment method, which will default when we're registering a bill. 
if we want a receipt reminder that's relevant to a purchase order. And then we can set the default supplier currency here, depending on the currencies that you have activated in your system. Under accounting here, we're going to see bank accounts. This will specifically be utilized for NACHA payments in the United States or SEPA in Euro Europe and other countries. For our bank account here, we have our, we can click into it to see our account number, the bank account, or the bank rather, the account holder name, the account holder. We can set the default currency, and we can set whether or not we want to send money to this contact. Now I can mark it as trusted. And this is important because there's an access right in the system that will allow one person to create a bank account and another person to mark it as trusted. So you have that separation of responsibilities. And once this is trusted, we'll be able to create, for example, NACHA payments so we can facilitate our ACH payments. Under electronic invoicing, if we're using electronic invoicing, specifically um, EDI or other regulatory uh, formats for different localizations, we can set them here. We can set default accounts receivable and payable accounts. So here you see it's defaulting to the one that we have set in our general settings, but we can certainly overwrite those if we wanted to. And then we also have the ability to set a partner limit that will say that this partner can have X amount of dollars under their total of receivables before we get a warning on our sale order invoice when we use them. Of course, at the top of our screen, one thing that I wanted to point out is that we can set our tax ID. And then at the top, we have our smart buttons, which will link you to different important information about this company. If we go to more information here, we can look at their, all their purchases, their partner ledger, the vendor bills, what has been invoiced, their documents, etc. So your contact record will tie in everything about this contact in one place throughout all of the records that they are associated with inside of the system, whether that's POS orders, sales orders, opportunities, events, tasks, etc. And most importantly, any of the settings that we set inside of the contact profile will be the default settings used throughout the system, which makes it super handy to make sure that we have all of our contacts set up correctly so we don't have to manually update a sale order or vendor bill every time we use this contact. We'll go into more details about some of these specifics throughout the course, but again, this is really important to know.